obviously we see the windhawk in the, in the back but if there's a reason coming and there is a reason coming he could be in a lot of trouble again yeah he didn't get the false maiden with his son that is a problem i think he wanted to get the false maiden and now he's yeah, in a bit absolutely. of a rough spot I actually think, depending on how bad the focus is going to be, and it can be really bad, as it looks like, he's she, he's able to leak. But he's the yeah. master of the Osirio splits. Let's see how how he's surprising us. And this split actually looks beautiful. Look at this. This is exactly how you want it. Snipe the, yeah. snipe the uh, dragon turtle and give your Osirio time. This is just beautiful. And over Look there, Cole, like, I think yeah. he's gonna leak, right? The cannoneer Dude, he's and the snail so on. hard. The cannoneer, is... the cannoneer is actually a, a really, um, how would I describe this? A really tactical send, because with sending a cannoneer early on, you know he's gonna clear quite a lot of the wave. But if the cannoneer is able to reach the king, he's dealing tons of damage at the king. Yeah, and. You almost never kill a cannoneer on wave four or five. Yes, and exactly. that is a thirty gold worth unit so, that is going going to leak. So it's a lot of gold lost. Yeah, you kind of sacrifice the chance of a huge leak, but you kind of get a small guaranteed leak, which he's yeah. going for. And sometimes you're getting a lot of king damage on top, which it did not happen, but it's still fine. Yeah. But I, I mean, Adamus got a send as well on four, so now Widerson and Adamus are just cruising. I think they know, they know what to do now. Absolutely, and look at the gold of Adamus. So he can be at four hundred and eighty value with seven workers, which is just awesome. He's he was holding everything. He's even shifting some gold. Maybe he no, was. He's not. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> okay, never mind. Last second choices. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was going to shift two for some better anti six. What Widison is doing here is just beautiful. It's really beautiful work with the Asaria, only tanking yeah. the boss, then swapping over to the other units. Alright, looks like Argonis is holding with his seven workers, already pushing up to more of them, and Khalid looks like a hold as well. Yes. But he's still a little bit behind. He's not having the worker power. Plus, his wave 6 is really weak. His wave 9 will be really weak so far. We don't see any impact damage in his roll on top. And this will be a quite hard situation for him. Yeah. But it's quite interesting that Adamus is just income sending every wave. I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see this yet. You're right. But look at this and they are being being starved. I think this will be a huge wave wave seven sent by Agonis and Kolek. Absolutely, and wave seven against anglers is a real a real big thing as well. Yeah. Not only and against Widder, Yeah, and Widow built a violet for six because he thought the scent was coming here. Yes. So yes, this I think, will be hard. I think the. The thing of Adamus going for the full income is that he knows that he's having a weak a weakness from one to nine kinda. And yeah. the more value you're having, the more workers you can obviously have, plus you're a little bit safer against bigger sense, and exactly those bigger sense are coming now. Yeah. Our mimic I think a mimic is a beautiful send against the Widdison, perfectly yes. within the income time. And I'm not 100% sure about the cannoneer. I w maybe would have preferred double brute here. I'm not sure. What do you think? The question is, what do you think Adamus has for seven? I don't like double brute versus the infiltrators, though. Usually you pull one brute to the split and the yeah. other one gets sniped by the infiltrators. So I can understand the cannoneer here. Oh, it's Cannoneer Brood. I didn't see the Brood coming. Oh. So this is really nice. And over there at Widdison, the Mimic is perfectly hitting the cat. This is so beautiful for uh, Argonist that he's yeah. that lucky. And now Widdison is going to leak huge. On top, yeah. we will see Adamus leaking quite a lot. Maybe his Veteran can carry him a little bit. But I think the Cannoneer will be a leak for sure. Yeah, but that's not a big leak. That is by Adamus, I mean. Widdison well, is just dead. 
it's gonna be a brood and a cannoneer, right? Yeah. And this is quite a lot of king damage. This will be a lot of king damage for sure. Like, look at this. This is 45. Oh my god. The new league values. You always think like you, you didn't hold anything. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So your prediction, how far are they gonna drop? I would say 50, 50, 55. Oh, oh no, wait, no, that no, was more, bad. More, more. Yeah. This is wow. Like 30%. You, can't, you can't say you can't say more if they're already at like fifty nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were talking. I didn't want to interrupt you. But yeah, you can always. This is a lot them. of damage. And this is throwing them back quite hard. The income send of Adamus did not help him here at all. They're one worker down overall. They're Haiti. 80 uh, king percent down and over 100 gold as well yeah and i i think this is just bad planning on their part they should have they should have known that they are both bad on seven absolutely, absolutely. and then going for a violet on on six on but Witherson's I, part is well i can understand the violet because he was as bad on on six as on seven the thing was yeah, just but, he was yeah. a little bit unlucky with the mimic like, the Mimic sniped his cat, which was, like, mainly his damage, plus mainly his tank on this wave. So I can mm. understand this. But there's one big key they're still having in their hand, which is Argonus and Colic are both super bad on 9. Like, yeah. Colic is really... He should be totally dead, because he's not having a single source of impact damage. And Argonus is having the Bucklers... And he's placing, or he placed the banana bank right in the middle of the lane, and we already see the ogre coming out, and this banana bank is not gonna live long there. And once again, what I don't understand is why are they saving with, when they expect a huge send here? And, and if okay. you're really bad on a wave, but yeah. the king ups are. Mm, I think I would have taken the income. At least everybody send a cannoneer and then go for the king ups. Yeah. To just gain a little bit more um, out of out of the Mythium. But as I do it now, they're now having the full AoE. They're close to the full attack damage upgrades. And this is going to help them so much the longer the game goes. That is true. Oh, but... look at the Ogre. Oh. Sorry to interrupt you. Oof. Rip damage. Yeah, but at least the Banana Bank did, did uh, now yeah, last a little bit longer. Yeah. So what what did you want to explain with the king upgrades? I interrupted you. Well, I th I think it's well, it is a, a big advantage to have king ups, but they of course give up all their pressure versus yes. Adamus and Witherson. But so come on, they they didn't leak too bad. No. The but, ogres the ogres gonna yeah. deal a lot of damage, but yeah. they will be still at least having triple the. The health of the others they can just put a few upgrades into king health and the king is still gonna be stronger than the other king because of all the other upgrades yeah i think this is perfectly fine because now they're equal on, on pressure they've they've stand not they, well they passed the weak wave the first weak wave of them and i think now it's like at least pressure wise it's totally balanced but they're having way more king hp they're having way more king damage which means more yeah. opportunities on the other hand, like gold is equal now, so yeah. I think it would have been the play to send income and then go for king. Yes, I then think they hold even better. I would still, I would still stand to this play. I think this was still the best, the best choice. Yeah. Now see some some king heals on on both sides, and we have equal workers. Even the value is almost one hundred percent equal. It's it's only twenty five gold difference in the two teams and their value yeah like this is this that's is huge yeah Argonist and Kolek are playing a really really good game yes they they're absolutely surprising me here they're they're facing Adams and Widdison on their key units on their strongest units they have look at the power score this is 100% balance right now the game yeah the only imbalance is coming from the king HP and yes. king ups um, yeah. And Ooh, look investment. at this. I was already telling about nobody wants to pick Willen, everybody's going for the loan. Looks like only Widdison heard my prayers. 
Adamus loves his villain on Kingpin. And Adam is going for the dead X egg. I love to go for that XX, especially on 11-12 with kingpins. You're having the best opportunity to go for those. And they're giving you so much power and holding potential for the mid and late game. Yeah. I'm just wondering why Witherson pushed everything into value with his loan. Yes. I think he's... A little bit fearing 12, it looks like, with upgrading the mask. Yeah, but, but why do you go for an Azaria then? Yeah, and you're going lone and then an Azaria. This is actually not making a lot of sense. Especially since he had two violets already for 11. Yeah, it's actually weird. That is really strange. But I think... They're now a little bit over passive because they're so low in king. And the longer the game goes, they're gonna regenerate. And the Damas is only getting stronger. Look at this, they're really fearing the all-in on 12 with the Damas going for another kingpin. Yeah. He's he's basically having a free hold right there with all the value he already has on the board and could stack up 12 more stacks on the kingpin. Mm. Absolutely agreed. This is really weird, holy shit. They're really over passive right now. They're having the same workers, but now their their income and uh, their their value is, is way way bigger. Yeah, the crazy part is that Witherson taking loan. He has ninety eight income only, and Argonist yeah. and Kolek took investment. They have one hundred seventy each. <laughs> that is like doubled. seventy gold every wave. So on wave thirteen, uh, I mean after taking getting income three times, the investment is already outperforming the loan. So loan yes. is such a. Well, the thing you have is, to make something happen immediately. If he if he did push for at least one hundred gold of the loan, it would have been way better because he's gaining more pressure and more income yes. for the mid game. But as he did it now, it is only it is really only for surviving the next big shot, which is now coming. And yeah. even, I oh know the the boa was last wave already. Yeah. So it's all about holding here, which they should do with their value, I hope. And if they're able to hold here, they're having the advantage because Witherson is actually pretty good on, on 15. Adamas is not looking too bad on 15 as well. Oh, we're seeing the Fire Lord and Colex reroll. It might be interesting on 15, though. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree with the four I sent into the Doomsday Machine on Kolek. Oh my I'm God. not sure I agree with the Shaman Sun versus Adamus. Dude, I'm not sure if you if you were just watching Widdison, but his Asaria did survive twice with perfect, like 150 health and killing just everything. Dude, he is the god yeah. of Asaria. This was just yeah. beautiful to watch. And everything we just criticized is is taking it's perfectly the advantage for Widdison and Adamus. Oh They're overvaluing, holding, and even breaking Argonist and Colic. I mean, still, they did not have a lot of impact. There was the Doomsday for Colic, but the, the, the other units were not that good. Yeah. And Argonist with his mid midwave banana bunk, which I don't really understand, did not really pay off as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're just seeing... Like superior build efficiency from yes, Adamus absolutely. and uh, On top, if you if you have a look at Argonist now, the white main just in the middle of nowhere, kinda. <laughs> this was his protection yeah. for thirteen. I mean, I can totally understand that there's leaks coming with having such a nightmare. Yeah, this so. is. You can just tell by looking at their builds that this is not optimized. Absolutely not. So I, starting from. Totally disliking the banana bunk because it's way too close to the sea serpents. They will just turn around and snipe the serpents, as we saw with the ogre before. The the white man is not buffing enough units, and a little thing you want to optimize is that you want to have a doomsday machine tanking for it, for your units. In this case, the doomsday machine will tank for some of the splitting units, but all the units that might come from the top, you, you will have the chance to snipe the ranger up there. Yeah. I think the game will just end on 15. Uh, I, I disagree. I think it's going to be 16 from Adams and Widdison. Oh, yeah. 
If they feel confident. Well, if they're leaking hold, here, which is which is kind of happening, I'm. Th we might see a, we might see a uh, see a send just from safety reasons. I think, exactly. Yeah. But otherwise, if there was like a good a good hold and everything, I think it would have been a sixteen. Wow. Oof. If that's not a pro league, one HP. <laughs> but for whom is it the pro league? I don't know yet. <laughs> like, it's probably not for colleague and agonist. No, probably not. Like, colleague not having a, a, a shot again. He did not decide to go for the Fire Lord last wave on 14. And now it's a little bit too late to yeah. get the Phoenix. We still having agonist here. Wait. Argonist has the choice to go for the Asseria, but he's doing two priestesses in because of the okay. white man buff. I think it's because of the white man buff. Yeah, I don't, I don't like really it feel though. It. No, absolutely not. And we're having another Asseria for Widdison, so he's likely to be the one holding here. Adamus, Archire, an Orchid, so she's looking really strong here as well. And he's only getting income sense, yes. so he will hold for free. Is the game a little bit laggy for you right now as well? Mm, no. That is great. Yep. So we're having holds at Adams and Widdison, both of them. I did not look over, but it's yeah, not looking like holds dead. there. And this should be a GG. Yeah, this is it. They have a huge advantage, but once again, they did not manage to make the best out of it. This yeah. Is, this is a phenomena you can really often see in like underdog teams against high elo squads. You, often they're getting, uh, they're getting an early game lead because the high elos are just over greeting. And then there's one decision that is not perfect for them and then their big advantage is vanished. Yeah. But of course, like high high early push does benefit you for the whole game. So absolutely, absolutely, that's exactly the, it. Yeah, it is really hard to finish a game, even if you get like eighty percent king damage on on seven. Yeah. It is really hard to finish them off if they have high push and high income. It happens I mean, to Ashton all the time. Yes, I mean they I did beautiful early game calls. The the brood yeah. against Widdison on three was awesome. Then the recent to just gain more income probably and maybe leak Widdison again, which did not have uh, not work out, but they they're getting the income. And then the big sense on seven just smashing them. I mean, if they yeah. leaked a little bit more, it it could have been game, right? Yeah. No, really the close. wave seven cent was was really really good. Yeah. As I said, I don't really fully agree with the wave nine decisions they yes. made. Yes, I think there's better options as well. And then the problem is that Adamus and Witterson don't really have a shared weak wave apart from maybe fourteen, maybe. But you can't just go straight fourteen after your nine yeah. cent. 